Hey, everybody. So I'm trying to prevent statue genocide here. Um, I haven't painted in like a few days and I'm kind of freaking out. My compressor went out. So I decided to order another one. Um, but this time I'm going to upgrade my airbrush a little bit. Uh, I've been using a real cheap airbrush from uh, some company called Master for like a year now. And it's been doing me real good. But I, I really just kind of want to see what else is out there. So I'm really anxious to get this one in because I'm having withdrawals here. I mean, it's like, it's like freaking out, man. Ah, it's here, guys. Cool. So this is a upgraded airbrush from the one I have been using. And this is the compressor. I went with the same company because I really like their products. So, oh man, I, I can't wait. This is going to be awesome. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So today's video, I just got a new compressor and a new airbrush in, and I didn't spend a lot of money on this one. And I wanted to take the time to review it for you because we all know that you need an airbrush or you want one. So this is a company called Master Airbrush, and I actually bought an upgraded airbrush, spent a little bit more money on it this time than I did to my typical $30 airbrush. And I got a nice little compressor because mine went out over the weekend and I haven't painted in a few days. So I'm like, withdrawals man i mean this is crazy so what i'm going to do in this video is i'm going to unbox this and we're going to test it out and see if it really is worth the money that i spent on it which was only a couple hundred bucks and we're going to do some painting with it and plus i'm going to show you some tips and tricks to do an airbrushing as well so if you're new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and also that notification bell so that way you don't miss out on any future videos so let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside the box real quick All right, so the model that I got here, compressor, is their TC326T. I have no idea what that means, but this is a pretty one here. I just wanted a single piston, basically, uh, with an extra tank, with a tank on the bottom. Uh, and this one's pretty neat. It's got a couple of airbrush holders here. It does come with your water trap, does come with your pressure regulator and everything. So this is basically essentially what you need in a compressor. Um, I, it is one of their more uh, upscale models, I guess you could say. I'm real excited to get this thing plugged up and see how it operates. You also get a nice little six foot airline here with it as well. And plus it also gives you a little bit of manual on instructional guide to airbrushing. Okay, now the airbrush here, oh, this is nice. I like this. It's kind of a black chrome. This is their Pro Plus here. Comes with uh, a couple of different size cups. Also has a quick release coupler here that you can plug up to your line. Uh, that's always handy, like if you're switching out airbrushes. And it also has an inline, uh, what I call the diffuser, but it's basically a water outlet that keeps uh, water from building up in your line, which is also nice. Uh, it does come in a hard shell case, which is another nice little uh, added feature right here for it. But um, I'm really excited to get these two plugged up and get them on the uh, workbench. And let's take a look and see what kind of magic we can make out of these. All right, so I got it uh, put up in place. I normally keep it on the floor, but, but my last one got pretty dusty. And that could have contributed to its downfall. But it was very old. I had it for quite a few years. Now, one thing I suggest if you're new to airbrushing is uh, get you some of this plumber's tape right here and wrap it around your inlets and stuff like that. That way, when you hook up all your, your inline and everything, you are preventing some air leaks. Uh, make sure it gets pretty good airtight. That way you don't hear a lot of hissing going on whenever you start running your airbrush. All right, so it doesn't take a lot. So once I got this wrapped up on there real good, then I'm just going to install my airline just like so. So this airbrush comes with a separate inline attachment here to catch water. It's a water trap, basically. But the compressor already has one on it. And I think this would probably be a little intrusive here on the airbrush when I'm trying to handle it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that off for now. And I'm going to save it. I mean, if, it, if I need it later on, I've got it to put on here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to wrap this with some little plumber's tape. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, install my Quick Connect here and hook it up to the line, and I'm getting ready to power this thing up. So I got that on there. I am ready to hook this up. This is your quick connect right here. These are handy to have, especially if you use multiple airbrushes uh, for 
uh, like priming or you just have you know a couple of airbrushes you want to use all right so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to turn it on and i'm going to adjust my psi uh, with this button here now i like to usually keep it around 35 psi 30 to 35 psi a lot of people work differently uh, so that's where i put mine at and we're just going to turn it on we're going to start adjusting here the thing i want to do is i want to make sure that i'm getting good uh good air from all of uh all of its extremities i guess you could say so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to check the air the water trap all right we got good uh Good connection there and then of course yep we got good air coming from there and I don't hear any leaks so we are officially set up so another thing I want to check and make sure that my quick release works real good there's no air coming out and you're gonna want one of these uh, and the reason being is because I want to use my other airbrush as well and if I want to all I got to do is release that one and this one and put it on just like so and there we go if i wanted to use this one for like primers and metallics and stuff and use this one for like finer details and other stuff then i can be able to do this with just a quick release switch them out bam there you go so the good thing about this one here is you got an air regulator valve here too at the base of the 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 airbrush and you can regulate how much air you want going in and out. Uh, so that's another cool feature. This is a dual action airbrush. So if you're unfamiliar with airbrushes, this is your first time really looking into them. The dual action, basically what it is, is it lets you push this button right here down and you get air. So once you get air and you cock back a little bit, that regulates the paint that comes out of the nozzle. So food for thought here, another really useful thing to have with your airbrush is this paint pot here. So whenever you get ready to clean out your airbrush, instead of just throwing uh, paint all over the place, you can put it in here and clean out your airbrush. And it goes into, this is top here is filtered and it goes into a glass jar that you can empty later on, but it's safe for like lacquers, enamels, acrylics, you name it, um, all your paint water everything can go into this pot right here that way you're not spraying it out into the open and getting overspray on everything there is all right so one thing that i like already about this from an ergonomic standpoint is the top of the button right here is uh, flat it's not rounded so when you rest your finger on it and you're, you've been airbrushing for a while or whatever and pulling back it's a little bit less pressure on your fingertip because when you're airbrushing and you're pressing on this consistently and you're doing a big project or something like um, this airbrush here is just a rounded in the front and everything and that can just man that's uncomfortable after a while on your fingertip and so I'm really happy to see that it's the little things now enough of that stuff I need something to paint hmm I wonder what's gonna be my first model that I paint aha I got it Okay, so my first victim of the airbrush i'm working on this dr strange here so i'm just going to actually just try and put on a little bit of the blue and see how this thing performs okay so one thing i can say is um, i got really good even distribution and stuff with the airbrush there wasn't any spitting and sputtering from it at all. It was just a really good flow. Uh, and uh, it allowed me to get up uh, pretty close um, um, at low pressures and everything and cover really, really well. So when I start doing shading, I'm pretty sure it's going to let me get up really close into the cracks and crevices on this thing. And I honestly am looking forward to finishing up this piece, which will be a later video down the road for you guys. So I see a lot of people making videos and talking about never get a dry tip again. I'm sorry, but I've been doing this for 30 years and you're going to get them every now and then. You may not get them as frequently if you maintain your airbrush, but you are going to get them. Um, the biggest thing is to identify it right away before you ruin your model. 
So when you start to see any spitting and sputtering or, uh, or any splattering of the paint, then go in, take your tip off and just clean it off with your hand. But be very careful in making sure that you don't bend the tip of the needle. The thing I like to use is a couple of drops of this air uh, flow improver here. But basically what it is, it does help you cut down on some of the dry tips and um, it does actually make the paint flow a little bit better through the airbrush. And what it does is kind of coats the, the needle on the tip on the inside so that way it doesn't dry out as bad. I have my little practice board here so I can see what kind of lines, see how smooth everything is going to be. So I'm not good at lettering so... But as you can see, I can get pretty close and it's pretty consistent line, pretty thin line. So this will work really good as far as detail work. And of course I can get really good coverage from far away. So I mean, yeah, this thing gets really good coverage. All right guys, so there you have it. Um, I am actually pretty impressed with this thing. Uh, for the money, I think it works just as good, if not better, than some of your, you know, four or five hundred dollar, three hundred dollar airbrushes out there. And uh, with the whole setup and everything, I think it's just going to make my painting experience that much better and less frustrating. Now, I do know this is a new airbrush, and of course, right out of the box and everything, everything's going to be just fine. Uh, but the one thing that I can say is maintain your airbrush, keep it clean. So one thing I found out that I'm getting ready to try is getting ready to get one of these uh, ultrasonic cleaners. That way, when I do my full breakdown of my airbrush, I'm going to actually put the unit inside of there and get it clean and make all the parts in there just as just like new. <laughs> all in all, in my opinion, it doesn't matter what kind of airbrush you have. It's only going to be as good as it is with you taking care of it. So getting on a regular maintenance routine is important if you want this to last. It doesn't matter if it's $30 or $300. You want to make sure that you're taking care of your airbrush because this is your tool of the trade, you know, in order to paint and models. All right, so there you have it, everyone. I hope this review helped you in making a decision when you buy in your next airbrush or your very first one. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button for me and also consider subscribing to the channel and also hit that notification bell so that way you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you want to go one step further, I do have a Patreon. You can find the link in the description below. I do have a new Patreon this week. That person's name is Leo Biart. I think I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm not sure. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, and uh, I would love for you to support the channel and the Patreon, but if, but if you're not able to do so, you can simply support the channel just by watching the videos and taking in some of the tutorials, maybe sharing the videos, and also leaving a comment below. So that's it for now, everybody. Don't forget, get out there and create something. Be safe. Print, prep, paint, repeat. And until the next video, everyone, we'll see you.